Before you could make any sort of a large purchase, take out a loan, rent, or even mortgage in the United Kingdom, the first thing they're going to ask for is your credit score. Now people have asked us in the past, a credit score? Does that mean I have to take another exam? Not technically, I suppose. There's no theoretical exam, like you don't have to go to any sort of written paper, but there is a practical exam about how you treat your finances. So let's talk about the nine ways that you can improve your credit score. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, my name is Zabriz and I currently work as a doctor in the NHS and before we get into the nine ways, I want you to first understand what a credit score is. Basically, we've got these guys, these lenders who's going to who're going to be looking into your credit history, looking at are you a person that would be a good idea for them to lend some money to? So what they'll be seeing is your payment and repayment history in the past, you know, what purchases you've done recently, have they been fairly large purchases, do you have a significant amount of debt, several credit cards, is your income sufficient to cover the amount that you are borrowing that they would be happy to think that yes, you'll be able to pay it all back. So there are a lot of little things that are taken into consideration and a lot of IMGs are freaking out because they're like, well, I've never worked in this country before. I don't have a credit history. I don't have a credit score. How will I get by? How will I do anything? And that's where our nine ways come in. The first way is by getting a credit building credit card. I know you're like, what? That doesn't really make sense. A credit building credit card. How does that work? Really, it's more for individuals who have poor to no credit because of bankruptcy or just bad financial choices in the past. But guys, I mean, we're pretty much there when you start out new in a country and it doesn't, you know, mar your reputation in any way if you start out with a credit building credit card. Just literally type that into Google. See the options that come up. Find one that's happy to take you and that you're happy to also take. Most of these credit building credit cards tend to have credit limits and that's their way of seeing that can you be someone who is spending smartly. So it might be that you can't spend more than 150 pounds or 200 pounds and then that will gradually increase as you start, you know, to spend in a smart manner and they're happy to see that you are actually paying back the amount that is actually there. So it's a good place to start out in your first few weeks in the NHS. Yeah, you're not going to be making a lot of large purchases on it, but it's perfect for like your utility bills or something small like that. So as the first thing, try and get a credit building credit card. The second way is guys, do not take out too many credit cards at once. If you're a couple, if you're like, all right, I'll take out two, my spouse will take out two, and then we can cover all of our bases. No, please don't do that. See, what happens is every time you're asking to take out a credit card, they're going to do a reference check on you. And these reference checks may be soft checks or hard checks. Typically for these types of things, for credit cards, they are hard checks, which means they affect your credit score. So every time somebody does this type of a check to see, hey, is this person somebody that we should give a credit card to? It will affect your credit score. If you do this every once in a while, it's not a big deal because then your credit score will, you know, it'll come back it'll fix itself. But if you're continually doing it, or if you do it a lot at once, it'll really knock down your credit score and you do not want that to happen. So start out small, start out simple, just get one credit card and go from there. The third way is by not borrowing too much on your credit card each month. Now, what does that mean? Now, of course you guys will understand that a credit card basically is a loan. You're being loaned this money and at the end of the month you have to pay it all back. If you don't pay it all back, there will be penalties. As I mentioned earlier, credit cards will have a limit, a cap as to how much they will let you spend on that card. So if your credit card limit, let's say, is a thousand pounds, all right, you should not be spending 900 to a thousand pounds each month on that credit card because it looks like you are really needing to borrow a significant amount of money each month, even if you pay that all in full at the end of the month, it 
does not matter. Try and put a good buffer of about 200 to 300 pounds in between what your max is and what you're actually spending. So like I said, if it's like a thousand pounds, you know, try not to spend more than 700 to 800 pounds at most. All right, guys, this is a really easy way to make sure you don't hurt your credit score. Now, of course, you may be wondering, what if there's some sort of an emergency and I need, I need to use a credit card because I don't have funds readily available? Well, you can do one of two things. You can either use your debit card. We'll talk more about debit cards in a little bit. Or secondly, you can pay off your credit card early, reduce the amount of debt that you owe at the end of the month, and then use your credit card again. The fourth way is by joining the electoral roll if you are eligible. So individuals who are eligible are individuals who are British, Irish, hold EU status or are from a Commonwealth country. But of course, if you're from a Commonwealth country, you must have the legal right to reside in the UK. If you are not someone who is eligible through these routes, like I am not as an American, I am not eligible for the electoral role because I'm not part of any of those countries that I've just mentioned. It's okay. It really doesn't affect your credit score that much. Ibrahim is, and he's on the electoral role. And I didn't think initially it really didn't make that much of a difference. I think he had a couple of extra points on me, but really don't fret if you don't meet this criteria, but if you do go ahead and get yourself on the electoral roll. Number five, pay the full amount on your credit card each month. Guys, do not, do not default on your payments. You're gonna see something really catchy when you get your credit card statement. It's gonna say, ooh, minimum payment, 25 pounds. And you're like, hmm, yeah, fine. I'll just pay 25 pounds today and you know we'll see what happens next month. Do not make that mistake. If you're not paying off your debt completely on your credit card and you don't have any of those fancy credit cards that will waive that debt, Guys, you're just building yourself a lot of debt because what they're going to do is they're going to put a penalty on you because you didn't pay all your money. Because you said when you signed your credit card agreement that at the end of the month, I'm going to pay this amount of money. And if I don't pay that amount of money, this is what the penalty will be. So please, if you can't afford to spend it, do not put it on a credit card. It is not free money. It's not your ticket to ride. It's your money that you're just borrowing that you then have to pay back at the end of the month. The sixth way, guys, do not check your credit score too much. Like I said before about the soft and the hard checks, if you keep checking it, it's gonna go down. It's just like one of those things, you know, you let your plant grow in the corner and you let it do its thing and you check on it every once in a while, but you just don't keep bothering it. Otherwise it won't bloom into the flower that you want it to be. Really, it's as simple as that. I know there are a lot of banks and services that say, oh yeah, we'll let you know what your credit score is. You know, uh, your credit scores change on a monthly basis. That's fine. If it tells you in that way, like fine, but don't go searching for it yourself. Let it do its thing. It's gonna take you a couple of months to really build up a good score. Let it happen. Just follow all the other things that we've already mentioned and you'll do just fine. The seventh way, try not to incur any debt. And this isn't just like credit card debt. It could just be debt in general. Maybe you took a cash loan from someone as well. Any forms of debt, when they go ahead and check your credit history, it's gonna come back and it's gonna haunt you. So like I said before, it's a really simple rule. If you can't afford it or you don't have the money there, do not be spending it. Don't tell yourself, well, I'm gonna spend 5,000 pounds on this and I know I don't have 5,000 in the bank right now, but by the time my credit card bill comes around, um, I'm gonna get paid and then I'll have 5,000 in the bank. Do not do that. That's like a terrible, terrible financial decision. If it's not in the bank already, and if it's not within a good buffer that God forbid, if something were to occur and you needed money for something else, like guys, it, you don't need to spend it. Like I've talked about this a little bit in our budgeting and saving, savings video, but really, if you need it versus if you want it. Do not put yourself into debt unnecessarily because that is a bottomless pit that takes a long time for people to get out of. The eighth way, keep all of your addresses up to date. Now, what do I mean by that? It's pretty straightforward, fairly simple. If you are moving, update the bank that you're now moving to this new address, update all your credit cards, debit cards, whatever, the electoral roll, you know, your council tax, Wherever you've given your address out because you're getting mail for a bill or for some sort of statement, update all of that. It makes it easy then for the credit report when they're checking to follow your trail of where you're going. If you don't do that and you've left your address somewhere else and someone else moves, they're gonna assume that somebody else lives there or there's gonna be a bit of confusion about what's actually going on. And for a while you may not even properly exist if they don't know where you actually have 
gone too. So please, as a priority, whenever you move, one of the things you should be doing is updating all of your addresses. And the ninth and final way, please do not try and withdraw cash on a credit card. I want to again remind you, your credit card is a loan. You would not go to somebody and ask to loan in cash, would you? Unless you were in like some dire situation. Do not ever do it on your credit card. It will really hurt your credit score. If you have to withdraw money, it should be on your debit card. And we'll talk a little bit about what the differences are in a second, but I really want to make it really very clear. Do not take out cash on your credit card. Now let's discuss what is a credit card versus a debit card. I've talked a little bit about credit cards already, but just to give another quick run through, you are borrowing money. You're taking out a loan each time you use your credit card and you should be paying it off in full at the end of the month. If you do not pay it off completely at the end of the month, you incur a penalty by way of whatever interest rate has been set up for that card that you agreed upon when you took out the card. Remember also that the credit card will help you build a good credit score if you're smart about how you're using it and how you're spending on it. A credit card is a useful way and a simple way for you, of course, to use all transactions and for you to be fairly mobile. There aren't a lot of restrictions when it comes to where and when you can use a credit card, but the biggest thing that you have to remember is you are borrowing this money. So it's not that when you use a credit card that month's money is instantly taken from your bank, rather that at the end of the month, you should be paying it back. But if we look at a debit card, a debit card is basically the money that you have in your bank as a piece of plastic. So the minute you use your debit card, that money is coming out of your bank account. If you do not have any money in your bank account, you will be hit with an overdraft fee because you're trying to spend what doesn't exist. It's nothing like that, oh, later on I'll pay it off. No, that's what the credit card is for. Your debit card is there for right now, money now. All right, so you can take out money on your debit card and it will not affect your credit score, but there has to be money in your bank account in order for you to do that. Your debit card, however, will not help you build a good credit score. It does not matter, guys. You can be using just your debit card for like a year, for two years, whatever, because you're not actually showing your responsibility or, you know, the fact that you can take out a loan and pay it back. You're spending whatever's already there. The debit card does nothing for your credit score. Now, I've given you all of these ways and a ton of information, and you might be like, all right, Reese, just, just break it down. Make it real simple for me. What is the easiest way I can start doing all of the things that you've mentioned? Basically, go ahead and get yourself that credit building credit card. On it, put your recurring payments like utilities, Wi-Fi, other bills, etc., and set up a direct payment from your bank that at the end of the month, they're gonna withdraw however much you spent on that card. That way, you've got your recurring costs covered, so you don't have to worry about defaulting on your bills. And since you set up a direct debit, it's gonna take out that money, and so long as there money, there's money in that bank account, you don't have to worry about defaulting on that payment either. Really, really simple, really basic, really straightforward. Now, I know the credit score is a really foreign concept to you if you've never had to think about it in the past, especially if you've never even had to use a credit card before, but I assure you, it's nothing major that you have to worry about. We have an article we've linked down below if you wanna get more information about understanding what a credit card is versus a debit card and how it can help you build your credit score and why your credit score is so important. So don't be shy. If you even have any other questions, please ask them below. But until next time, guys, Please, if you've not already, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out our amazingly awesome newsletter, and we will see you next time. Bye.